The world we live in can be a minefield of confounding, confusing, and conflicting peaks and valleys. Have you found yourself exasperated and bewildered to the point that you threw your hands up in the air and declared, I can't literally even? Well, never fear, novices. Your postgraduate studies in life start here. I'll be your sage on the side for those ups and downs. I'm Professor Moose, and I'm going to help you learn to even. Hello, novices. Welcome to the very first edition of Learn to Even. I will be your guide, your sage on the side, Professor Moose. The point of this podcast is to give you a guide, to give you a handhold, to provide some way for you to cope with the ever-changing, tumultuous vicissitudes of life in the modern era. In other words, we're here to help you learn to even. Let's take a moment to thank our corporate mas- uh, sponsors. Learn to Even is brought to you by a grant from Mudbug State University. Mudbug State, not just good, it's good enough. Learn to Even is also brought to you by an endowment from Noblesque Pharmaceuticals, the makers of Trancadone. Noblesque, making the world better than you deserve. So as I'm sitting here recording, it's becoming clear that this should really be something I should try to script. After taking several takes, sort of uh, shooting off the cuff, isn't quite going as smoothly as I planned, but I suppose that's fair for someone who considers quality uh, and uh, production value to be important. So what we're going to be talking about today is social distancing. We've all been in the midst of the COVID-19 coronavirus pandemic for over a month now, probably closing in on two. And To a great extent, our isolation and social distancing has helped us to flatten the curve. And we've seen clear evidence in other areas where people have decided to go ahead and go on out and mingle and do what they usually do, that things go awry. People get infected, the numbers go up, things like that. I find it odd. I'll find myself in Walmart or in Kroger, uh, not sponsored. And I will, uh, you know, see arrows on the floor and I'll see directives to wear masks and encourage people to practice social distancing. And to a great deal, a lot of people are doing that. But then there are just a few people who seem to be going about their daily life as if nothing is going on, as if nothing has changed. Nothing's different. Um you know, paying no attention to the indications of uh, aisle directions. And I'll admit that I've been there. You know, I'll, I'll step into an aisle going the wrong way um, if there's nobody there and if I can just grab something quick and get out of the way. But the degree that people seem to ignore other people's personal space is sort of astounding. You know, not just coming closer than six feet, but you know, within easy, you know, distance to smell someone's breath. Um, I don't want that in everyday life, much less during a pandemic. Um, You know, personal space is important to us. It's something that, uh, you know, if if I can push you away from me, then I should. (laughs) Um, You know, you, you, you need permission. You need, you know, some some consent to sort of invade that arm's length bubble, I think, you know, ex- except on very, you know, rare circumstances. And, and of course, there's also, you know, there, there's times that we sort of give tacit uh, uh, permission for that to happen anyway, you know, in, in a crowded subway, uh, sporting events where, you know, people are sort of packed elbow to elbow, you know, you sort of expect it. And it's, you know, if, if you don't want that, then then don't be there you know, uh, but during times like this, it's important that we maintain, you know, a healthy, respectful distance, um, you know, from one another. I suppose one of the things we should uh, discuss when it comes to social distancing is, you know, how do you ask someone to give you your space without you yourself seeming, uh, you know, aggressive or, uh, or defensive, uh, you know, you could just go the route of looking at someone and say, back up, you know, 
Uh, but I think that, you know, that's probably going to draw more attention than most of us would, would want. And, you know, now all of a sudden, you know, we're the crazy one who is uh, freaking out uh, over this person being too close to us. So, you know, how do you go about that? Um, well, you know, you could always try the subtle method, uh, you know, give someone a, 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 a look, uh, maybe uh, fake a cough, um, you know, clear your throat. But ultimately, um, you know, it's going to come down to the point where you're going to have to make a, a verbal request. And I think that in that circumstance that, you know, manners and civility are the way to go. Obviously, you know, if you're wearing a mask, um, they can't see you smile. Uh, although they may be able to tell you are smiling uh, if they're, you know, making eye contact with you. But just a gentle, you know, excuse me, would you mind uh, giving me a, a couple of feet here? I, I'd appreciate it, you know, nice and tacit. Or you could go the funny route and, uh, you know, just, um, uh, pardon me, uh, would you mind stepping off? Uh, I'd appreciate it. Uh, uh, could you back the truck up, please? Because uh, you are... Uh, you're, you're cooking the eggs I've got in my cart here, right here, with your body heat, and that's not necessary. I don't know. Uh, <clears throat> you know, I myself find that I walk a fine line uh, between being sometimes... Well, my wife says that I, I need to watch my tone, and it's something that I've... I don't know that I've ever been really cognizant of, is that tone... Um, I know that I can be very direct when necessary. And, and sometimes I, sometimes I make the choice to do that. Um, you know, if, uh, I'm in a situation and, um, say at a restaurant and someone has done something that's clearly outside the expectations or has, uh, neglected me and my party in some way, I'll try to be polite a first, uh, but if uh, polite isn't cutting the mustard, you know, I'm going to be direct. Um, I'm not going to make a request like, would you please fill my, you know, tea glass? I'm just going to look at someone to say, bring me some iced tea. You know, and to some people, that's confrontational. To me, it's just getting to the point and sort of cutting away all the niceties you know, it's it's the gilding on the lily. It's the the, the floral lace uh, around the underwear uh, when what we really need is just something to hold, you know, our our bits in place. Um, <clears throat> maybe I'm wrong. Maybe that's me. And, you know, if uh, if you think so, then, you know, by all means, uh, I'd love to hear from you. Um, you know, if you want to get in touch, the, uh, email address is, uh, what is that clicking noise at, uh, gmail.com, or you can hit me up at learn to even on Twitter and Facebook. But, you know, we're in new territory socially when we sit down and think about the pandemic. Um, you know, so many people are out of work. Uh, so many people are, you know, just not able to leave their homes. Uh, I suppose, you know, if you have a, um, don't have any underlying conditions and you uh, don't interact with, you know, people who are likely to get sick, as long as you maintain some social distance and wash your hands a lot and stuff like that, then there isn't a tremendous amount of risk. Uh, especially if you're limiting, you know, where you're going to places like the grocery store or, um, you know, other places for food or, or essential items where you're not really having close contact with people, especially, you know, not shaking hands and, and things like that. But at the same time, you know, it's sort of weird. My wife and I are both professional educators and, when we started the pandemic, everything sort of switched to online. She's teaching students online. I was teaching one online class, and now all of my classes are finishing up uh, online. How many more times can I say the word online? I hate that. Um, one of the things that one of my pet peeves is uh, is uh, verbal repetition. 
uh, whenever I'm writing or whenever I'm talking something, if I have to say the same word over and over and over again without a good alternative to put in to sort of, you know, keep it from being monotonous, it, it sort of drives me nuts and I have to point it out. But anyway, <clears throat> so, you know, we are sort of homebodies anyway. We like to stay at home. We entertain people here in our house a lot. Um, you know, we don't travel a lot, maybe once a year, maybe once, uh, or twice, you know, every few years, but, um, you know, my wife has not left our driveway since we got back from spring break. And that would have been, uh, the second week of March. So, you know, I mean, you really have to just kind of, uh, you really have to kind of like who you're living with, you know, uh, and it hasn't been a tremendous struggle for us. We do miss our friends and we've gotten to interact with them, uh, online. There we go again, uh, via the web, as well as uh, a couple of, uh, face-to-face -face hangouts that we, uh, orchestrated in our driveway, um, and, uh, maintaining a, you know, 10 foot distance between us them sitting in their car, us sitting in our car, or not us sitting in our car, but us sitting on our driveway and them sitting in our, their car, uh, just hanging out, talking, visiting face to face. And you really don't realize how much you miss just personal face to face interaction until it's gone. You know, um, I'm sure we're all, you know, uh, capable of, um, you know, we all have moments where we just like, we want to get away from people. Um, you know, I'm a fairly gregarious person. I like to be around people and hang out and joke around and stuff like that. My wife is, uh, uh, she uh, describes herself as a mushroom. She wants to be inside. She wants it to be cold and, uh, dark. And, uh, I, on the other hand, you know, I, I like to get out and I like to rub elbows with people and, and, and stuff like that. And so, um, you know, it's, it's been somewhat of a struggle. My, you know, trips to the store, to Walmart or Kroger, uh, have been sort of mini expeditions and sort of a hunter gatherer sort of sense. Um, I'll leave the house and put on the armor of my, uh, dust mask, um, uh, my face mask, uh, crafted by Pat Brown. Thanks, Pat. We uh, appreciate that. Um, uh, the ones you did both for Lee and I were fantastic looking. Uh, and quite functional. And so, um, you know, it's, it's almost, uh, it's almost an expedition. Uh, you know, I'll put my gear on and I'll go out and I will hunt and gather the items we need. Um, you know, as, as best as I can find them. And it's sort of weird. I've noticed things disappearing off the shelves in sort of different waves. Of course, you know, toilet paper has been fairly non-existent, uh, in the stores, for any length of time since this all started. Uh, but other things sort of came and went in waves. I remember once uh, there were no eggs. Um, I wound up buying a, a carton, the last carton of eggs at Kroger, which were some uh, organic free range eggs, uh, which were terribly expensive. We usually pay maybe, you know, a couple of dollars. And these were, you know, six, um, six dollars and change. Uh, for a dozen eggs. <clears throat> and, um, you know, the, things sort of mellowed out. There was no toilet paper, but everything else was fairly well in stock. And a few, a couple of weeks went by. And then I went, and then all of a sudden, there was no flour. No flour. You could find specialty flours. You could find like uh, masa harina. You could find, you know, all kinds of gluten free stuff uh, potato flours, rice flours. But it's as if everyone who was stuck at home started going through a sort of common fever. Everyone wanted to start cutting their own hair and making bread. And everyone decided, you know, that they were going to become expert bakers and, you know, start their own uh, line of uh, sourdough starter uh, when they come out of this. Uh, and our household is actually no different. Uh, I, I just spent uh, a few minutes uh, pairing off and feeding sourdough starter that my wife started weeks ago. And, you know, it's it has its good days and its bad days. Uh, but eventually we need to get around and bake some bread. So, <clears throat> so what are we talking about? You know, we're talking about life 
in the uh, the pandemic era. You know, um, another thing someone pointed out, and I've seen it several times, is you know we think about spending time at home. In 1994, there was a terrible ice storm that struck this area, and people were at home, um, you know, with nowhere to go, many people without electricity uh, for a long time. And nine months later, there was a noticeable baby boom. So I can't help but think that there are going to be, nine months from now, um, a whole slew of corona babies uh, all over the United States. Um, probably all over the world. I mean, you know, one of the things we've seen uh, from people staying at home uh, around the globe is um, a decrease in pollution. Uh, there's been uh, evidence that the uh, major holes in the uh, ozone layer of the Earth have begun to, um, you know, get smaller and, and heal themselves up. Uh, but we're also, you know, in about nine months going to see probably a population boom. Um, you know, there have, um, there have been a lot of tragic losses. Um, it has, uh, it's not as bad as say the, the flu, the Spanish flu, uh, the, you know, the, the early 1900s. Uh, but you know, in the modern era, we haven't seen anything like this before. It's, it's totally new uncharted ground. Uh, but you know, when people are sort of sequestered and, um, stuck at home they'll do the kind of things they do when they have free time on their hands you know uh we have a, a personal little library probably about seven or eight bookshelves full of books um but you know we have spent very little time with those uh you know it's it's sort of like uh you know it, it, it's a different kind of pandemic when you can be stuck at home it's a different type of um it's a different type of sort of natural disaster when, you know, you're stuck, but you also have the benefit of uh, electricity and Wi-Fi and, uh, you know, television, gaming, things like that. Um, you know, it, it feels, the sting feels um, not nearly as bad from that perspective. Now, of course, I mean, if, if you know people individually that have, you know, suffered and lost because of the disease, you know, it's, it's a great difference. It's, it's a, it, that, that's a different story. You know, you're feeling something on a much more personal level. Um, there was some, um, <clears throat> many years ago, um, and I can't remember where I, I heard this. I'd have to go back and look it up, but, uh, some scientists used to talk about, um, what they called the monkey sphere. And, uh, the monkey sphere was, um, you know, some uh, studies that were done with uh, monkeys. And they seem to point out that monkeys could basically wrap their head around um, knowing about 250 individual other monkeys. Uh, they would recognize them. Uh, they would you know, know them and sort of care for them as sort of a small community. But beyond that number, um, they didn't really have a good grasp of it. And so I'm, you know, reminded about uh, Facebook. You know, when you look at Facebook, uh, Twitter, Instagram, other social media, uh, you look at your number of friends, you look at your number of followers. If you're a YouTuber, uh, you know, check your subscriber, you know, count. And think about how many of those people you actually know. You have a, a personal, uh, real relationship with. Even if it's uh, uh, even if it even if the relationship is over the internet, uh, even if you've never met face to face, you know you, you can still you know know someone and, and build an intimate bond and connection with them. But you know, think about um, you know we all have modern devices and phones, and one of the things that I've noticed over the years is we uh, we don't remember phone numbers anymore. We we might remember five or six, but it used to be. You know, you had to know the phone number of everyone you wanted to call, and you had to dial that phone number every single time you wanted to call them. Um, that's why phone books were popular. And now, once you learn someone's number, you plug it into your phone. You never worry about it. When you want to look them up, uh, you know, you just type in their name, and the phone number comes with it. 
And, you know, imagine if you had to sit down, uh, your Facebook gets hacked, you've got to sit down on Facebook, or, uh, you know, something happens with your phone, and you have to manually put in the name and number, or, or even just the name, of every single person you're connected to that way. You know, I, I think I have somewhere around 700 friends on Facebook. And most all of those people, with very few exceptions, I at least have met in real life. Um, most of those people, you know, I, I know well enough to just approach out of the blue and start up a conversation. Uh, but there are plenty of people that don't, you know, sort of keep their friends list um, that way. I mean, they'll, they'll add anybody that, you know, that sends a request. Uh, which is actually, you know, something that um, that hackers and fishers and scammers um, tend to rely on. Um, you know, whether they clone a Facebook or or something like that. You know, uh, they'll put up some um, profile that looks legit and just send information out. Then you click on it, they send you a message. You send them a message back, and by the miracle of technology and those who know how to exploit it now all of a sudden uh, every single person you know has been encouraged to purchase Ray-Ban sunglasses and um, <laughs> you know Ray-Ban uh, I don't know how Ray-Ban might feel about that uh, they might uh, not like that but uh, I guess as long as the uh, the sunglasses are selling uh, it might not be so bad um, so this has just sort of been me rambling off at the mouth for a while um, <laughs> I, uh, I'm not really sure, you know, where to go with this or how to go with this, but uh, I'm hoping that your input will uh, lead me forward. Uh, we've talked a little bit about social distancing today. We talked about our corporate sponsors. I'd like to uh, send a hearty thank you to Mudbug State University. Remember, folks, Mudbug State, not just good, it's good enough. And Noblesk Enterprises, Noblesk Pharmaceuticals, the makers of Trancadone. Noblesque Incorporated, making the world better than you deserve. That's all for now. Thank you for listening. I've been Professor Moose, and I hope that you have learned to even. <laughs>